Hi guys. Today we are just going to talk just a little bit about what would Jesus do about judging and judging situations. So stick with me, okay? And we'll find out exactly what Jesus says about it. Most gracious and precious Heavenly Father, I personally ask for forgiveness for each and every time that I have judged a person or situation. I am not perfect, but you are. Lord, I want to see this world as you see, hear and perceive as you hear and perceive. It is my will to line my life up to your will and yield. I want to pray and stand in the gap for the situations with all those who are willing to unite with me in faith. You paid the ultimate price, Jesus, for us to have all authority. You were born, lived a sinless life, died on the cross, and rose again for us to walk in your authority. Please open the eyes of my understanding and lead me and guide me to all truth. In Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. Okay, what would Jesus do? We all have opportunities to judge and be judged every day. Each and every time that we are confronted with one of these opportunities, we can, one, lay it at the feet of Jesus and ask him how to pray. Or the other option that we have is to judge the person or the situation ourselves, setting the word of the Lord Jesus in vain. Now, righteousness is the reason Jesus has come to make the people righteous through and through. He also begins to interpret the law of Scripture for them with this in mind in Matthew chapter 5, verses 41 and 42. As you know, long ago, God instructed Moses to tell his people, do not murder. Those who murder will be judged and punished. But there is is an even harder truth. Anyone who is angry with his brother will be judged for his anger. Anyone who taunts his friends speaking contemptuously toward him or calls him a loser or scum, uh, they'll answer to the higher court. And anyone who calls his brother a fool may find himself in the fires of hell. Now, have, have you ever considered that when God allows us to see something contrary to his word, he's giving us an opportunity to collaborate with Jesus in his vineyard, which is the entire universe and all therein. Many times in our normal everyday lives, God allows us to see with our natural eyes and hear with our natural ears the sinful nature of others especially in the day of untruthful mass propaganda and social media that we live in now. God does this to see if we will judge and condemn or offer what we see and hear back to him as a prayer of intercession with the faith and compassion of Jesus our Lord. Convicting others of their sin is not our responsibility. If we will all just stop for a moment and lay our personal opinion aside and allow our Father God through His Holy Spirit to lead and guide us into all truth, ask the Lord how to pray for each and every situation or person. He may give you a scripture to read over a situation or person. He may give you a brand new heart of compassion for that person whom you consider your enemy. 
we are, after all, charged to love our enemies. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 through 48, it says, You have been taught to love your neighbor and hate your enemies. But, but I tell you this, love your enemies. Pray for those who torment you and persecute you. In so doing, you become children of your Father in heaven. He, after all, loves each of us, good and evil, kind and cruel. He causes the sun to rise and shine on the evil and good alike. He causes the rain to water the field of the righteous and the field of the sinner. It is easy to love those who love you. Even a tax collector can love those who love him. And it is easy to greet your friends. Even outsiders do that. But you are called to something higher. Be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Whatever he says to do, do it immediately and watch him move in that situation as only he can. Stop bombarding others with your negative and fearful propaganda. Jesus came so that we would have authority over every situation, yielding back to him. In Luke chapter 10 verse 19, it says, I've given you true authority. You can smash vipers and scorpions under your feet. You can walk all over the power of the enemy. You, you can't be harmed. When God allows us to see something that does not line up with his word, it is a gift that he is entrusting to you. It is a test that he is giving you and is watching to see what you will do. In Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, it says, Words have power in matters of life and death, and those who love them will savor their fruit. There's a huge difference in saying, this is happening in our world and I feel God prompting me to pray. Or, hey, y'all better wake up. The rulers of this generation are so stupid that they allow this to happen. Now, where's Jesus in that statement? That's pure hate speaking. We must truly ask ourselves, as the body of Jesus, did they let all this happen? Or were we, the church, too busy with our self-righteous judgment to unite our hearts in prayer? Do we forget that we can do all things through Christ? In Philippians 4.13, it says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. We are to watch and pray. We are to stand and believe. We are to be the church of the everlasting, never-ending kingdom of Jesus Christ, our Lord. King of kings, Lord of lords. He is watching and waiting for his body, the church, to mature and to be who he paid such a dear price for. In Matthew chapter 21, verse 21, it reads this. And Jesus answered and said to them, Truly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and cast into the sea, it will happen. So how are you going to react to your next opportunity? I pray in Jesus' mighty name that you yield the situation back to the Lord and stand in the gap for the situation. Watch and pray. Take authority. Speak to the mountain and call to be cast into the sea. Call on your brothers and sisters in Christ to agree with you in prayer. Be the body of Christ, the word, the deed, and truth. And if you uh, don't know how to pray, in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 15, God gives us the example to pray. You pray through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will lead and guide you in what to pray for. But the perfect um, example of prayer is what Jesus left us. And that says, Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. He gave us the perfect example on how to pray. 
the more you grow in Christ, your prayer life will increase. So that's all I have for you today. It was short and sweet. Um, but I love y'all and I'll see you in the next video if, if we're not called home first. Love y'all. Bye.